Hello friends, welcome to C-Sharp Intermediate to Advanced Tutorial. In this video, we are going to report the allocated bid. So to recap, to allocate a bid, user will uh, decide the floor, then they will decide north or uh, south. After that, they will uh, place a check mark. So if they place a check mark here, then the example this example will know that user allocated bed number 9 on a specific floor 2 so since this is just a demo we doesn't say whether it is north or south but uh, you can easily put one more uh, uh, if condition to check whether it is a north floor or south floor all right anyhow here we will say which bed number is allocated and on which floor so we need to actually tell south or north also but that is not uh, yet implemented uh, here but uh, you can easily implement that all right now let's uh, go ahead so these are all the slide decks from uh, previous uh, eight parts First we learned about the basics, then we talked about the example. After that we explained how the containers are organized for this example. After that we also learned about the document outline view. Then we placed all of our uh, six rows in the table layout panel. After that, we concentrated on the bottom portion, bottom portion in the sense it is a control portion. Then we provided the scroll bar support just by setting the auto scroll property. After that, we arranged this label at a design time. So this label represents floor 1, floor 2 and floor 3. Then we learned about the row count, column count and the gross style properties. Then we implemented the code to add all the checkboxes at form load event. Now in this video we will implement this add or free bit. So if you see here we are creating almost a um 15 into 6 15 into 6 checkboxes and all checkboxes will uh, produce the check state changed event and that event is handled by a single handler function that means inside the handler function we will uh, find which checkbox is checked by the user so that's what we are going to do in this uh, video So if you see here, this is the function. We already provided the skeleton when in the previous video, when we uh, loaded all the checkboxes in the form load. So as already told, all the checkboxes, which is arranged in uh, six rows and 15 columns, all these checkboxes will uh, produce the event and that event is handled by the single function so that means we need to know which checkbox is clicked by the user so if we know that then only we can specify uh, a checkbox on a specific floor is allocated or a bid on a specific floor is allocated so here if you see the function is receiving the sender that sender we are typecasting it as a control so we can typecast it as a checkbox also but a checkbox is actually a control so we are typecasting it as a control then we are holding the reference then your floor number is uh, declared here and if you see now we are accessing our table layout panel and we are accessing the function get 
position from control so this is the function name get position from control and for this control get position from control we are passing the actual control so this control is nothing but the checkbox which is clicked by the user so once we pass that control to get position from control method of the table layout panel it will return a object called table layout panel cell position so from this object we can get the uh, position of the user clicked checkbox so if you see here the row and column can be retrieved from this position that means a table layout panel cell position will tell us user clicked some checkbox and the checkbox instance we are having here and at present we are having it as a control instance and when we pass this to the get position from control it will return the table layout panel cell position from that position we can tell where the control resides that means we can get the row as well as a column so that tells where the control is so now our goal is to get the floor number so just remember this so this is how we organized it there are three floors so this is the top floor and each floor is organized by two rows that means here this one will be the row 0 row 1 2 3 4 and 5 so now let's uh, come back here from this uh, position we know the row so if the row is greater than 1 greater than 1 means it can be 2 less than 4 less than 4 means it, it can be 3 so 2 or 3 so that's what here this condition tells so if it is 2 or 3 that's what the row of this position returns that means the table layout panel cell position when it returns 2 or 3 we decide floor number is 2 the same way we are deciding when it is less than 2 that means 0 or 1 we say floor number is 3 and if it is uh, otherwise it will be 4 or 5 somewhere you sir click it here or something uh, some checkbox at uh, uh, floor 1 that means row position 4 or 5 uh, that produced the event and that is captured by the alert or free bit so here we decided our floor number so this uh, information is enough uh, to say which floor the bid was that means which uh, bid the user is allocating or deallocating remember so uh, let's say there is a checkbox here if uh, it is not allocated when user clicks it, it will place a check mark that means uh, it is allocated and if they uncheck it it should go to the normal stage so when it is allocated we need to put a hello background otherwise we should go with the default background so that's what we are going to do now so once again we are uh, typecasting this uh, sender to checkbox actually um, this is uh, not required here itself uh, we should have used this but anyhow that's okay now we have checkbox chk then we are checking whether the checkbox is in checked state so user will use the same click event that means the uh, the event checked checked changed uh, so the checked changed event will be produced whether you place a check mark or if you remove it so whenever you click it the event will be produced so that's why we are checking so if it is placed a check mark then here the condition will tell that the user is actually allocating a bit and if they are removing it we will go to the else portion that we will see later so at present let us say it is like this and the user is placing a check mark now we are let's take this one we are let's say the user is placing a tick mark here so this is in checked state this seven and 
we will say that uh, the checkbox so we already received it here right back color we are setting it as yellow we want to display it like this for 7 so that's why we are setting the back color property then we are setting the four color to black and if you see by default our color we set it in a design time these are all uh, white color we set it to the form and automatically uh, we will get this uh, white color for the check boxes now we are changing the four color to black why because here back color is yellow and if we have the text in white color it will not be visible so that's why we are changing it to black color all right finally we are telling bed number zero this is the positional bed number zero allocated on floor position one and in the parameter the position one will be substituted to here so chk text so the chk text here is a seven we will say bed number seven allocated on floor floor number we already calculated so we will say that uh, in which floor user clicked it if uh, it is clicked here we will say floor one and uh, if you want to know uh, whether it is north or south then you need to check whether it is add or even number and based on that you can tell so that is not implemented and i am leaving it for you to implement that all right now we will go to the else portion in if the control flows to the else portion that means the bed is already allocated user is clicking it again that means they are deallocating it that means uh, uh, the patient is uh, uh, discharged on that uh, specific bed so else portion comes in the else portion if you see we are using uh, this dot back color this dot back color is nothing but the forms back color which is nothing but this uh, dark blue navy then four color we are setting it as uh, white that means we are, if you place a check mark this will be yellow and if you remove it it will come to the default color so that's what we are doing and here we are saying bed number text 7 freed on floor the floor number floor number again the positional same stuff what we did here so that's all here let's go ahead and uh, do this implementation so here this floor is hiding the second one right but uh, you may think that it is not fully occupying uh, let's say um, in the last video we said row zero is the zero and the span is two rows position so let's see how it grows um, now let me change this to uh, size 48 that's a too big um, let's go to 28 30 or 36 that's what here okay let me go with 36 okay so we will change everything to 36 and you can see how it is spanning to two rows the border you can see here still there is some space okay cancel floor one so here you are seeing the usage of the row span if i go to 72 here it is not spanning right the, it's spanning to two if we put three or four row then you will be seeing it fully but um, we decided let's go with uh, two row span that's enough and when i put 36 you can see how it is growing here to the second uh, row all right now there's one more issue here let me run this it may take a while to create all the check boxes we know that it's a split container right so the form is not resizable but users still they can resize this splitter and they will see all this refreshing issue and since the form is not resizable they may complain that the rows are here not visible so now let's close this and we need to select our splitter so selecting splitter 
we can go to the document outline view since we came here you can see how it is organized this is the form so we have a split container split container contains two split port panel 1 and panel 2 panel 2 we have all these controls lbl display this we are going to use now and all these control we will use uh, later and in splitter one if you see we have the table layout panel and at design time we are using uh, three flows and this contains all these uh, three flows right that's how it is organized and now i want to select our split container then go to properties is a splitter fixed here i am turning it as a true now what happens user cannot resize that uh, panel 1 and panel 2 so both are in a fixed size now since we fixed the splitter and if you see the arrow mark is not coming that means the size is a fixed all right now we will go to the implementation so as we already explained so we are just uh, implementing you can take this code from the uh, video description we provided a google drive link you can use ctrl c to copy the code from the drive location or you can download the file so all these are explained in the slide so i'm directly running it now so now let's go ahead and allocate some bit so at present if you see on floor 3 and in the south portion i am allocating bid 2 and it tells bid number 2 allocated on floor 3 now we will allocate one more bid here this time it's floor 2 bid number 7 and it says bid number 7 allocated on floor 2 and we will allocate some continuous bid here in ground floor So you can see how it is working now we will go ahead and deallocate bid number four and five on flood on a floor one it says that bid number four freed on floor one and bid number five freed on floor two bid number two freed on floor three and if you see all these checkboxes which we created dynamically is tied to a single handler function and here we are enquiring the cells clicked position using the uh, table layout containers get position from control so the event is already giving us the sender uh, if you see here we are when we are creating all these check boxes we created this in the previous video right we are using this checkbox instance and we are handling the event check state changed and we are giving this so whenever the check state is changing uh, we are coming here from the table layout panel we are uh, enquiring the position and from that position we are getting the row here we use the row only you can also get column also but column since we have the text property um, where we are using it yeah text property so we no need to get column why because this text is going to give me the uh, column number so if you use a different text and if you still need the column then you can use the from this position you can use row there is one more property column right you can use that column property that's all here in this video thank you for watching bye